Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield. At the incomparable Dana Thomas House, the Frank Lloyd Wright masterpiece, many of you have been in this house on tours. But one thing that they're doing here at the Dana Thomas House this year and last year, which is different than in the past, is offering specialty tours. So what we've done is we've hijacked one of these specialty tour guides, Frank Marchant, who's been giving tours here for 23 years to show us some of the finer points, some of the things that you might not get on a general tour of the Dana Thomas House. Frank, I, I say 23 years, you must be an old timer with Frank Lloyd Wright. Yes, I've been a fan <laughs> since I was eight years old. Is that right? Yes, I was exposed to uh, the Johnson's Wax office building at night when I was eight. Is that and I right? became a fan from then on. When you were eight years old. Yes. So you've been traveling the country visiting his work, haven't you? Yeah, I, I've been inside 250 Wright buildings, <laughs> so I'm doing pretty good. Well, that's about all of them, isn't it? No, there's 433 builds, 76 demolished. No kidding. Yes. And set, so that leaves you, what, like maybe 100 or so that you have to? Around 100, Are you yes. going to live long enough? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but you're going to try to see them, huh? I will try. Okay. And we're, I, we mentioned we're in the entry hall this is one of your favorite places in the Dana Thomas yes, house yes it is because he he really wanted to start out making a statement and he started out making a statement with these grand archways that frame the front door didn't he correct and this is really one of the greatest entries in any right house uh, that was ever built mm -hmm. here we we walk in through this double arch glass doors with a arch glass ceiling of art stained glass over here, two butterfly designs, which is really the, the greatest symbol of the Dana House mm -hmm. is the butterfly design. And you go through these two arch doors and you see in front of you this statue and beyond there you flow up into what I call the upper entry hall, uh -huh. which is an arch fireplace. All three of these arches, the two art glass doors and the arch fireplace are equal in height to blend you from one area to another to another. And then of course you focus on this statue here. This statue was designed by Richard Bach. Mm -hmm. Richard Bach did statue work for Wright throughout the prairie period of his career. He worked out of Mr. Wright's home and studio in Oak Park and they were good friends but they were strong personalities mm -hmm. and they argued for some time about what this statue should look like. Then Wright went away to Buffalo where he was working on a number of major projects in Buffalo. He was gone for a time. Then he came back to the home and studio and this is the first thing that he saw when he walked into his studio uh -huh. and he yelled out, my God, Dickie, I think you've got it. <laughs> and he ran across the room and gave Richard Bach a great big hug. Oh, it's beautiful. What's the name of this statue? This is called the, Fla the Flower and the Cranny Wall. Uh -huh. It's based on a poem of Tennyson's. It mm -hmm. was one of Wright's favorite poems. And it is actually, the poem is on the back of the statue. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's terrific. You're right. It, it, so much of this, and we're going to talk about this more, so much of what he liked to do was frame areas of the house. Yes. And he also liked the highs and lows, where these different levels of the ceilings were very dramatic uh, changes. It, I want to look at something behind you here. Come, come this way for me. And let's take a look at this. Now, this is the only one of these he ever designed, isn't Correct. it? Correct. What is it? This is a calling card box. So Mrs. Dana had a lot of visitors, and the butler could put the calling card on the box mm -hmm. here, and you think it's stationary, you think it's attached. But it looks like it is. Take it and take it to <laughs> Mrs. Dana. <laughs> and what's interesting is that this is 1902, much later in what's called the Usonian period of Mr. Wright's career, he designed two pieces of furniture that very generally have the same look to them. Uh -huh. One was a four foot square coffee table yeah. and the other was a stool. And these were both done in the early 1950s. Yeah. Too bad we don't have them here. Yeah, wouldn't well, that be terrific? It wouldn't go with the furniture. No, here it wouldn't. It wouldn't, but it'd be nice and, to complete And we have plenty them. of furniture anyway. Yeah. We mm -hmm. have around 105 pieces oh, of wonderful. furniture. That's the most elaborate idea for a card holder. Isn't it? Imagine. Okay. And then, 
<laughs> look down here even more detail. We have here two umbrella stands with mm -hmm. copper underneath so that no water would get on the floor. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and wouldn't damage the wood either. No. Terrific. Okay, we were talking about framing. Let you and I go up these steps because one of the first things you see is when you when you look past the steps and through the hall, you see that magnificent dining room. That's and he right. frames that for us, doesn't he? Yes. Hey Frank, the first thing you see when you come up, and we will get to this great entrance hall later, but the first thing you're, you encounter is, is that wonderful dining room. Correct. And it's framed just yes, the way he it wanted is. it. Huh? Mr. Wright was a very dramatic person, and he loved to frame rooms like a stage and, or like a picture. And from where you're looking, you can look and as you walk into the reception area here, you see the entire dining room framed for you. And you can look through this open area here to and the right. see art yeah. glass all the way down there. Isn't that interesting? It's it is. A, it's, it's like a, a, a separate little treat. <laughs> yes, that he cut yes. those, it cut that uh, that sight line for you, and it's on the other side also. I'll be done. Even though that's... no one hardly ever sees mm -hmm. that side. Now this might have been an area. This little seating area might have been an area that that uh, folks uh, probably wouldn't have spent much time in it. That didn't stop him though from creating furniture and having Bach create a fountain here. That's right? cool. Th these yes. chairs are interesting though, aren't yes, they? Yes, they're they're very nice pieces of Wright furniture, and this this is essentially the first time that Wright was doing uh, chairs like this and the basic design here became rather a standard throughout the f next 10 years. And if you look at these, they, they do look similar. Mm -hmm. they, they look similar, but they actually, they're more than similar. If you take this back off, you'll see that these two chairs are identical except for this back. Right, and so what was the purpose of the back? This is a recliner. Oh, so he right made a recliner out of it. Recliner. I'll be done. And you can just push your hands down and move forward on rollers here, mm -hmm. back and forth. Uh huh. And, and and these these armrests are significant too, aren't they? Yes, they are. These uh, actually look similar to butterfly wings, mm -hmm. and the butterfly was such an important thing to Mrs. Dana, and it's a theme here throughout the house. Mm -hmm. And it's the only house that has any kind of an animal theme to it, in, designed by Wright. But the windows, um, much of the much of the glass work. Uh, the 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 the, the uh, lamp coverings and the windows. A lot of them have that butterfly theme, don't they? They they have um, some have a butterfly theme. We also have a sumac design and natural designs in the art glass windows beside yeah. that. And of course, as the entry, you have the fabulous butterfly window design that we've already yeah. seen. And the sumac design, is that's what you're talking about, those, uh, those glass, that art this glass? This is a modified right sumac design mm -hmm. here. We'll see over in the breakfast area by the dining room the fabulous fabulous windows designed by yeah. Wright that are abstracts. And there are times when this fountain is working and this Correct. is this is Bach, he's the same sculptor that did the uh, the statue yes, at the entrance. Yes, this is right? Richard Bach's work here on top. The lower part is designed by Marion Mahoney who is a, um, uh, an employee in the home and studio also. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this is called the Moonchild Fountain. It's essentially these children are raining water onto the earth, and this is the moon rising here. Mm -hmm. There was all sorts of legends about this, this statue, <laughs> that it was supposed to represent Wright's children, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. It's not even the correct amount of children okay. that Wright had. Fun, a fun story to tell, though, if you don't mind yes. avoiding the truth a little bit. Sure. Huh? <laughs> Well, Frank, we discussed that as you walk in from the front hall, the first thing you see is this beautiful framed uh, dining room. And it's interesting because because this huge table that sits in the dining room is actually the reason why the state came to own the Dana Thomas house, isn't it? That's true. That's what's, true. what's that story? Uh, Governor Thompson was a, a person who loved antiques. And at the time when he was first governor, there was a man named Bob Beisenbacher who had an antique shop on Cook Street. And the governor would come down there occasionally in his lunch hour and visit Bob. He was a very personal guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day, he, Bob took him into the back room and showed him this table. Mm -hmm. He was a friend of the Thomases who owned the house at the time. And he, he showed them this table and it was 
Governor Thompson's introduction to Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> and the governor was very interested then in knowing about the table and knowing about the Dana House here mm -hmm. in Springfield. And Bob, being friends of the Thomases, was able to bring him into the Dana House and give him private tours. And then a few years later, the Thomases wanted to sell the house. And that's how it is that the governor came to get the money to buy the house for the state of mm -hmm. Illinois. So it, it's because of this table that the governor came yeah. to do that. And think of all of the great things that have come from the governor buying this table, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, buying the house rather. He's affected so many people in a positive way. You're constantly running into people since I've been here for some time who will tell me, well, I, I took a tour when I was 10 years old and it affected how I became as an artist. Mm -hmm. And you hear things like that all the time. And all from that one yeah. antique visit. Yeah, kind of a chance meeting. And then back, I guess it was in 1981, uh, the state finally got title to it, mm -hmm. closed it for several years, did yes. this wonderful restoration job on it, and found many of these pieces. Now, you say over 100 right designed pieces of furniture. We have here. 105 pieces of furniture. Wow. That's the, the largest amount of furniture in any right house mm -hmm. ever designed, and our, our furniture collection just fabulous beyond belief. This table here has wings that spread out to the end of this room and just beyond there. Uh -huh. You see we have all of these chairs here. We yeah. have a huge amount of the high back chairs. So uh, our collection and furniture is unmatched yeah. in, in any other right house. Frank, in the, in the front hall where the, where the fireplace is, there, there's a, a one of a kind, or maybe this is the first of a kind. These benches, uh, I think you called them cantilevered, and it was something that Wright designed and hadn't designed before. No, Mr. Wright would become known for his cantilever designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, here in the D Dana House and in the other earlier homes, we have cantilevered eaves, but that was the only cantilever he was doing at that time. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is the first cantilevered piece of furniture design that he did. And we have two of them on either uh -huh. side of the upper entry hall here. And they, they are uh, uh, completely attached to this little half wall uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. Later he would design um, a sofa that had cantilevered arms on either side. But this is the first that I know of kind of interior furniture design mm -hmm. that had a cantilever to it that was so dramatic as mm -hmm. this. Th there's a, a vessel over here that looks like it might be, or it could be a huge vase or it could be an umbrella holder or something. There's an interesting story here because this just turned up, didn't it? Yes. In the <laughs> 1980s, sometime after the state had the house, there was a gentleman who found this in his basement. Mm -hmm. And I believe he put it in his pickup truck and he drove here to the house, uh -huh. walked into the carriage house where you get your tickets, yeah. holding this and said, this looks like it belongs here. And in fact, it did belong here. There were maybe three or four of these made in Mr. Wright's career. And one of them in the 1990s sold at auction at Christie's for $25,000. Wow. Wow, isn't that a great story? Now, these, scre these fireplace screens here, he didn't make many of these either, did he? No, no. The only fireplace screens that were made by Wright are here in the Dana House. Mm -hmm. We have this set here and also in the library. And we have along here, we have an abstract of the sumac design, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. you'll see them in a number of the fireplace designs. Down, down below in the living room, you'll see the the abstraction of the sumac design down where the logs are stored. Yeah, and, and the reason, we've mentioned this, the, the number, the, the high number of, of right designed furniture pieces that are in this house are largely attributed to the fact that the Thomases loved Frank Lloyd Wright's work. Those were the people that owned the house last before the state. And they had a relationship with Wright, didn't they? Yes, they did. They. They, uh, when he, they first bought the house, they would write to Mr. Wright for permission to make every change. And for example, in the living room, there are two porches on either side. And they wrote to Mr. Wright and they asked 
permission to put glass, glass these in, and they were going to put little heaters out there. That's all they were going to do. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Wright wrote back, and he said, well, it would be better if you didn't have to do that, but if you have to, you have to. Mm -hmm. Because he did not directly say yes, they, in fact, did not do it. Mm -hmm. But then a time came when the relationship ended. In the windows over here in the um, reception area, Mr. Wright wanted these to be loaned out to him to go in a tour that was going to start in Italy mm -hmm. and then go to Eastern Europe. He couldn't say how long it was going to be. It ended up being a, more like two years than mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Thomases refused to give them up, right as he yeah. could be, became extremely bitter, and that was the end of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that was in about 1951. Mm -hmm. So Beautiful here we doors. are in the living room. Right off the, it's right off the main entrance hall, mm -hmm. but, but guests wouldn't have necessarily come in here, would they? No, um, this was essentially a private area for Mrs. Dana, and uh, only her social club would come here and see this part of the house in all likelihood. This table here was designed for essentially playing cards, and her groups would come here and play cards in this mm -hmm, room, mm -hmm. and those would mainly be the only people from outside of the house that would ever get to see this particular yeah. room. This, again, the signature lamp of his, it's oh, just this gorgeous, is just isn't magnificent. it? It really this is. This is called a double pedestal lamp, and there are three that were made in Mr. Wright's career. Two were made for this house. One was made for later for the Roby House. The Roby House was supposed to get a smaller, original designed but they ended up getting a duplicate of this lamp. And we bought this at auction at Christie's. We actually didn't buy it at auction. We had a deal that we would pay $1 more than what the Roby House lamp brought at auction. They uh -huh. were both going up for auction at the same time. Yeah. So we paid $1 more yeah. than uh, oh. what the Roby and House lamp. And there are only lamp. three of those in existence. That's mm -hmm. correct. And again, I love this, ta this table. She had a lot of card players because it's a big table. But these vases are, are really unique. Sometimes Wright did not go in for a fancy name, and he called these <laughs> weed holders. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and you can put very little into here. Yeah. So you see that about all, all you can put in there are a few weeds. Yeah, that's right. Just a, just a long weed or two. <laughs> <laughs> and such a this fireplace over here is such a dramatic uh, uh, contrast to that arched that big arched fireplace we saw in yes. the front hall. This is essentially your typical right prairie style fireplace of which we have a number in the house altogether we have six fireplaces mm -hmm. here in the house and they all work um, the arch fireplace that you saw is something special that was here at the first time in the dana house and then later he did two more in the martin house in buffalo which mm -hmm. uh, the martin house is another very large house that was designed two years after the Dana House was designed. Mr. Martin actually came here to see the Dana House when he was considering having Wright do a house for him. Frank, Mr. Wright was, was not, uh, didn't lack drama, did he? No. He's got this magnificent long hallway. It seems to go the entire length of the house. Back to the gallery, right? <clears throat> That's correct. We're headed to the gallery. And this would have served as? This is the party room of the house. This party is where room. Okay. Um, the receptions would be held. And and music played? Yes, we have a music balcony here. The third music balcony is up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an interesting thing about, uh, about the, actually we'll get, we'll get to, the, to these tables and the furnishings here. But you have mentioned several times that this was a, a building uh, project without budget. Correct. There, it, what, uh, Susan Dana said, you spend whatever you need to spend to get an open to, checkbook. To, to bring an open checkbook. And when you look around, and you pointed some of these out to me, you get over here to this, to this wall, and you can certainly see that it's a nook and a cranny, sort of, 
Mm -hmm. But you can see that he wanted people to notice everything. Yes, you stand <laughs> here, and who is ever going to get over here in a party? We have all of this detail on either side, uh -huh. extremely detailed art glass designs. We have the wood here. We have above here uh, lights that you wouldn't normally see right. unless you work your way over here. Yeah. It, it, this is what an unlimited budget it's, it's is even all about. It's meant to be draped off yes. so that, so that it, it'd be excluded from the rest of the room. Mm -hmm. But look at all there is to see. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> One of the things that you can't help but notice is, and I've never seen tables like this before. No, you wouldn't. And I guess, and, and I wouldn't because they weren't built before, were they? No. They're nothing no. like this. What's the, what's the purpose? These tables are what we call print tables, and they were not invented for the Dana House. There was another house that was designed the same year as the Dana House, a little house in Peoria, and they had the first print table designed. And then these two were designed mm -hmm. here at the Dana House. And the idea is that Mr. Wright wants to be in control of every space in the house. And he does not want somebody else's pictures hanging on his walls. And most of the walls are brick, so the house mm -hmm. is client-proof anyway. So he had to design some place for the pictures of the owner to go. And mm -hmm. this is where they go. This is how the table looks when it's open. And this is how the table looks when it's folded out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So this one uh, folded out will look just like this one over here. Correct. And he's, what, he's, what he's telling him, what he's telling his clients is, okay, if you must have artwork, here's where you're going to put it. You're not going to put it on my walls, though. Correct, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> my goodness. We saw a, a vaulted ceiling similar to this in the dining room, and I mentioned to you, I thought that was the biggest one in the house. You said, no, who, no, the one in the gallery is bigger. Yes, this, this is much bigger than the dining room ceiling. It's terrific. It's a fabulous ceiling, yes. And of course, like you, you mentioned that there's a music, there's a band uh, area up, uh, or a music area up, up to, uh, to entertain here. And... Uh, this, this is not a window back here, though, is it? No, no. This is a representation of the Japanese Tory Gate, and we have there hanging on hooks art glass design. It's the only time that Wright ever did anything like this in a house. Yeah. We mentioned the uh, the open checkbook. You know, the, the yes. one that this was a house without a budget. Um, as he got later in his in his career, he. He kind of started ignoring budgets altogether, didn't he? Yeah, Mr. Wright was somewhat legendary for his homes going over budget. And there were a number of rich clients, like Mr. Johnson, Johnson's Wax, who came back again and again for more large projects that would invariably go over budget. Yeah. Another person was Harold Price, who had a, a huge, huge um, skyscraper built in a small town of Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. He had an oil pipeline business and that went way over budget and then later in his life he had Mr. Wright come back and do a large house for him right near Mr. Wright's home at Taliesin mm -hmm. West. And he, um, he, Mr. Wright would have a party every Easter for lunch. All of his clients would be invited. The house had just been completed, mm -hmm. and he saw that Harold Price had a new blue suit on. And he said, Harold, how can you afford a new blue suit? I must have forgotten something. <laughs> The joke's on you, Harold. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Frank, thank you so much for spending this time. Thank you so much. Frank Marchand's tours and other specialty tours are available throughout the summer, but you have to make reservations, and there is a donation suggested. With another Illinois story in Springfield at the Dana Thomas House, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. 
You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.